So a girlfriend of mine is an attorney at an all-female litigation firm, and which I imagine looks like a girl gang like that. And about a year ago, they hired their first male law clerk. And during staff meetings around their big law room board table, he would offer up his opinions about legal matters and cases unsolicited. He had not completed his legal training, had not taken the bar exam, and yet here he was, confident as the day is long, that his opinion had value in that setting. Now, we know that women and girls in our state suffer under decades of bad public policy. Our education budgets are starved. Uh, we incarcerate more women per capita than anywhere else in the world. We have more women murdered by intimate partners than anywhere else in the country. And we know that when women sit at the policy table, they're more interested in solutions-based policy than in ideological gridlock. And yet, 2018, best year ever in the state of Oklahoma to be a woman on the ballot. Still only 22% of our state legislature is represented by women. The problem is we're also missing from the corporate office. In the C-suite in 2018, only 5% of Fortune 500 companies were led by female CEOs, which impacts the way that these corporations treat their employees. Paid family leave, paid maternity leave, flexible work environments that take into account that women are often the primary caregivers for their children and also for their parents. You also see this gap when you're looking at wage disparities. Women in our state make 77 cents on the white male dollar. That number becomes worse when we're talking about women of color doing the same work, as well as women, members of marginalized communities. But my question is, how did we get here, and why? I believe that boys benefit very early on from a series of unintentional apprenticeships. They learn how to speak to each other and to their superiors by watching the men in their lives do just that. They learn to talk trash on the t-ball field. They learn to come up with terrible ideas in the creek bed and then actually execute those terrible ideas because they're allowed to play longer and farther and dirtier than little girls. And all of these experiences lead to this early sense of belonging for boys that carry them from the t-ball field into my friend's legal boardroom. Now, I'm a second wave feminist. If you don't know what that means, you should go home and Google it and you will be terrified of me. Um, <laughs> but um, essentially, I don't believe that the system is rigged against me. I believe the system was created without me in mind at all, which is why I'm so frustrated when thought leaders tell women and girls the solution is just to lean in, drag that chair up to the table. And my new favorite platitude is I should just go wash my face and stop believing the lies that I've been telling myself, right? So all of these platitudes are well and good, but they don't actually equip women and girls to function within a system that is not designed for them. My first year of marriage, my husband was a second year law student, and every morning he would watch Mike and Mike in the morning, not these two mics, different mics, um, on ESPN. It was a show where they recap top 10 things the day before in sports, top 10 things today in sports, top 10 things tomorrow in sports. And that was my first experience seeing that he understood light years ahead of me that he did not have to be an expert in order to participate. In fact, the participation was more important than the content, which is the opposite of what I learned as a little girl. We have to teach girls to participate in low-stakes conversations so that when it's time to have high-stakes conversations about policy, about running for office, about salary negotiations, they've already set the tone for what to expect from them. They can drag a chair up to the table because they're already in the room. And essentially, if you want to do anything for the little girls in your life, go home tonight and tell them that their experiences and their opinions matter even when they're not the experts. Because if we are telling little boys that what matters most is participation, and we are telling little girls what matters most is content and expertise, and being so good they can't ignore you, then that's just a load of bullshit. 